Yes, Jesus loves you and me. Yes, Jesus loves us. Yes, Jesus loves us. For the Bible tells us so. Hallelujah. Today we're going to be reading. Most heavenly, precious Father God, we thank you. We for your blessings, for your mercy, for your understanding. We thank you, Father God, that you continue to draw us closer and closer to you and your love. We thank you, Father God, that you have blessed us with a whole heart, with true assurance, full assurance, by the report that you have given us, that we are your children, and that we have the power that our Lord and Savior have. That we have the anointing that has overcome all things. That have removed mountains. That have commanded sycamore trees to be thou plucked up in dry lands. And be thou planted in the wet sea. We thank you, Father God, that you have given us your Holy Spirit, your truth, that you bless us with a roof over our head, that you bless us with the ability to wake up in the morning and to be able to use our own two feet, our own two hands, that we are able to provide for our homes. You bless us with work and Provide for us the things that's needed, Father God. You give us a mind that is capable of doing these things, Father God. You give us a heart to love our family enough that we may seek to be a blessing to our family and provide for them. We thank you, Father God, that you have taken us from the most miserable places in our life. And you have set us on high in the places that we had never, ever imagined that would ever happen, nonetheless, even be possible. We thank you, Father God, because you are wonderful. You are amazing. You are magnificent. You are omnipotent. Father God, we thank you. And we ask that you give us an understanding of your word today. This day, as we read and eat of this daily bread. That we be in remembrance of your word, Father God. Throughout this day and the day to come. That you draw our our hearts To pray unto you, Father God. And to be in praise without cease. To have a melody within our hearts, Father God. In Jesus' mighty, holy, precious name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory be to God. I... uh, God is good all the time. And all the time, y'all go ahead and finish that sentence right there on the comments. Whoa, God put me right here. Okay, the tongue. This is what we're going to be reading on. James chapter 3. 
the tongue. Ooh, that's a scary thought. The tongue. You know, a lot of times our emotions will take take us out of the way as if we weren't children of God because we allow our emotions in this world to cause us to sin in our anger. But he tells us right here, My brethren, be not many masters knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able to also to bridle the body. Now to bridle the body is to... We are wives of Christ as ministers, you know, as the church. And He is our husband, Christ Jesus is. Now we are the husband men, which is to say a field of our Father God as He has planted the seed of Christ within us. That it may grow and increase by the Holy Spirit. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us. And we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven with fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeneth. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell for every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind but the tongue can no man tame it is unruly evil full of deadly poisons therewith bless we God even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Now our Father God had given us a gift of creation within us. We have the gift of creation. We never take away from creation, but we add to creation. We can add a blessing or we can add a cursing. We have the gift to claim power in a good way. And we have the gift to claim power in a bad way. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Now he's telling us this, that the reason why these things ought not to be is because, see, we are the first fruit of his creature. Our entire body belongs to God, even the tongue. And that is why we are to be in remembrance of his word. Because he tells us to be slow to speak, slow to anger, and quick to hear. That as the remembrance of the word of God may appear and abound much more through us. That we may speak as oracles of God. He say, say yea, yea, or nay, nay, any other thing than that is becometh evil. Whoso is a wise man and endureth with knowledge among you, 
Let him show out of a good conversation his work with meekness of wisdom. Now Christ Jesus, he had uh, this lady that was found in adultery. And as she was found in adultery, these guys brought this woman to Jesus, waiting for the lust of affections to crucify this woman. Yet, he was slow to speak and slow to anger and quick to hear. And as he heard, he discerned their spirits. He discerned that their spirits was to cause him to condemn this woman and to allow them to stone her to death. But he did not condemn this woman. He spoke with wisdom. As he waited, he wrote on the ground. He waited to remember what is given by our Father. He waited to react as the Holy Spirit would increase and give him what to say. And in the hour that the Holy Spirit spoke, he said, Any of you that have not sinned a sin today, cast the first stone. And all the way from the eldest to the youngest, they disappeared. No one was left. And he says, Has not any Man condemned thee. She said, Lord, no, no man hath condemned me. He says, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Whose is a wise man and and doeth with knowledge among you? Let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts. Glory not and lie not against the truth. He said, Allow allow not the lust of the affections to take hold of you, that the sun may go down upon your wrath. And you see, I'm not talking about the sun itself, the sun in the sky. I'm talking about the Son of God that is within us. The Son, Jesus Christ, let Him not go down upon our anger as if we are not the children of God. Let Him not go down upon our jealousy or quick thoughts in this as we react in a worldly manner. But let him arise as the Holy Spirit has risen Christ Jesus from the dead, that we be not about our dead works anymore. He said, if we lack wisdom, ask God. Ask God, ask our Father God, the one that gives wisdom that does not take away. And He will give it to you. Glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Now this will give us a discernment within our own spirit. In that moment, in that moment, we we don't need to discern others. In that moment, we need to discern ourselves. He said, when we leave a building... And dust our feet off. 
as a testimony against them. Be sure that we are children of God. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. In Matthew chapter 5, verse, I believe 7, but I know it's in Matthew chapter 5, he says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. In Titus chapter 1, verse 14, he said, Unto the pure all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving, there is nothing pure. For they profess, they speak as if they know God. But in works, they deny Him. So within their heart, as they act from their heart, they deny Him. He said, whatsoever thou speakest is within thy heart. But wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable. Blessed are the peacemakers, he says. Hmm. Gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruit. He also tells us, he says, As we give mercy, we'll gain mercy. But if we are not merciful... We will not receive mercy. Understand, a lot of people may not know God or yet be confident in Him as we are. We have to give grace. What's grace for? Grace is for those that are doing wrong yet have no knowledge of the truth to do any right. Without partiality and without hypocrisy, you're like, what's partiality? Well, Jesus Christ, He's the same yesterday, He's the same today, as He will be the same tomorrow. His love, it doesn't change, it's unending, it never changes. He said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. My love will never change towards you, no matter what, he tells us. He said, you can leave me and come back, and I'll still love you. Lord willing, you make it to that day. This is what we are to be as well. We have the same power. We have the same authority. And we ourselves are risen in Christ from our dead works. We have overcame death through Christ Jesus. We have defeated and put all principalities to shame as we have taken the crown that Christ has given us, the crown of righteousness. As we seek Christ Jesus to be even as He is, we gain the knowledge to live the life of Christ so much that we do not have excuse to justify ourselves saying, well, He's God. God is God. Not one man is righteous. Christ Jesus himself even said, I came not to do mine own work, but the work of my Father that sent me. The same Father that sends us and have given us Christ to be his son and daughter's. Without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Most heavenly and precious Father God, we thank you for your word.
We ask you, Father God, that you give us your Holy Spirit that may abound more and more and more, that we be fruitful in your Holy Spirit and your first creatures, Father God, that we have the mind of Christ, but first and foremost, have the heart to seek to be even as you are, to learn of you as we know you are lowly in heart. Your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Father God, let us learn and know who we are and what we are to do that we may do it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. God bless you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I know for a fact that God loves you. Let's pray to be the God that we can love each other as much as he has loved us, continues to love us. God bless you.